This is the man that makes Sanctuary great. This is Andrew Lockington. He's the composer. Look at this, wow. Yeah, amazing. He's the man who like actually helps the words have impact. And this is my guitar player. Yeah, I'm the guitar player. <laughs> As a musician and a music lover, I think music in, in film and television is, is incredibly important. It, it helps inform the mood of the scene. It, it helps uh, drive a scene. The music will bring up the tempo of the show, will bring up the pacing, will bring up the stakes and the crisis, and that the music completely helps that journey. The music in Sanctuary does that exceptionally well. I think the music um, really helps set the tone for the show. The show has a very particular look and a very particular feel, and the music is a huge, huge component uh, in that uh, in that vibe, in the look and the feel of the show. Uh, the show kind of changed scope and scale, and it got bigger and, and cooler, and sort of doing tiling moves and interesting um, visual kind of add-ons and we really needed to find a new sound for the show to signify the new look of the show um, and Andrew was sort of our only choice because these guys love music and they they really use it to help tell the story of their show so I feel like they give me a lot of responsibility and a lot of playroom to try new things and when I float ideas they bounce ideas back to me that are even better and then it just gets us going in a creative room our music is is very different these last two seasons because Andrew brings this this he's got a very worldly feel to his music it's not um, and it doesn't sound sci-fi which is interesting it's although it works completely in the realm of what we're doing well the overall approach we determined early on when I was hired we were looking for a general sound of what is the musical sound of sanctuary and we, what we ended up with is really uh, a mishmash of all these different kinds of music, but a recipe for that. So we have a, a certain percent of it is Middle Eastern or Melanesian influence, certain percent of it is um, medieval, like hurdy-gurdy type instruments, old uh, European instruments, and a certain amount of it is technologically influenced, like old sounds put through f modern filters or interesting 8-bit processors, sounds that kind of pull it out of the ancient and give it a, a sense of a modern element, a modern sound. He's brought, he's brought in drums, he's brought in a lot of voices, he's brought in instruments that we've never used before. I love the sound of vocals in the show, and I love using vocals as an instrument as opposed to as a, a narrative, as a giving English language song. I, what I'm really trying to do is use the, the voice as a as a sound and as a melody, and really not have the audience grab onto what they're saying. So one of the techniques, the first, um, I, I've used maybe five or six different vocalists. And the first one I used is a girl I've used many times, Emily Claire Barlow, who is a great singer out of Toronto. And she came in and we started playing around with Latin and trying to come up with phrases that translated into Latin. And then even in some cases mispronounced on purpose. Um, really help give this sense of a of a musical element without distracting the audience away from the dialogue and what's going on in the show and from there i played around with um you know some farsi some syrian vocals um yeah a lot of middle eastern vocals just because there's uh they don't aren't constricted to the uh scales that we are like in in western music we have a 12 tone scale and there's a lot of quarter tone music all over the world. And I really like that element of something, there's a melody that I, I understand. And when it gets to a certain point, kind of twists in a way that I've never heard before. And I love using that element in the show. What I do is early on in the season, I will write some themes, some general ideas once I've seen picture. One of the big advantages of working on Sanctuary is because there's so much blue screen and green screen, so much effects, there's a big amount of time between when I get locked picture and when I actually have to deliver. So whereas on other shows you might have 10 days to deliver an episode, on Sanctuary, you know, it might be two or three months. So it allows me to do a lot of lead time and go in and do sessions with, I have a core group of musicians that I work with that kind of comprise the sound of the Sanctuary score. You just throw suggestions out like, you know, it would be neat if there was something very, an, a very annoying tone happening here to keep the audience on edge. And then Andrew go, 
Well, there's a Chinese violin track that I recently recorded that if I pitch it this way, I think will give you the effect. And you just love this process. It's like, that's where the real art of it all comes in. The coolest thing about working on this show is I'll come up with off the wall ideas that most producers would veto immediately and say, hey, you know, that's, that's too outside the box. And these guys are exactly the opposite. It was a piece where I said, uh, okay, and maybe use um, a harmonica in here and a zither and because I'm just I, I don't know the, the, the instruments that he uses so I just throw this stuff out and uh, and maybe it's a, a jaw harp and and he goes oh, okay and I went no no I'm, I'm just kidding he goes well and I said how about this place we use a, a, a hurdy-gurdy you know and he goes I do and I went are you kidding he goes no I have an ancient hurdy-gurdy that I use that that does this it's crazy I went you're kidding he said no half the sounds you hear come off of something like that he uses all these bizarre instruments to do stuff, and it's where the very unique sound of this is. And we're we're unbelievably blessed to have this man at the helm who is crazier than we are when it comes to what sanctuary should sound like. I can dance! That, yeah, this is interesting. You, I don't know if you remember, this is the very first thing I wrote for you guys. Yes. Yes. You had, I had never done nothing. Anything. You'd yeah. never heard anything. And I get this call saying, hey, can you write a piece of Bollywood music for Will to dance to? That is kind of Bollywood, but also... At stakes, it was going to be score as well. Yeah, it had to kind of be both. And in yeah. fact, I think in the end, it was used... Well, I had always wanted to be an intercut, the music be an intercut. Her in the helicopter, helicopter and him dancing, and yeah. so we begin with the dance, and then it would go to, and we keep the whole, we pull the whole story in. I was like, yeah, just, just go do that. Can you just do that? Yeah. And we did. <laughs> and it was really fun. It was really fun. And in fact, I got, I don't know if you remember, I got a lot of good feedback from the choreographer because she was telling me the elements of the, the piece that I guess they had danced to, um, in practicing for this scene that, that they had really responded to. So. And she, the th main things she said were bongra drums, dole, and those are the elements that I kind of built from, and um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. is an episode where we have Amanda's character is all alone in this abandoned building and there's such a sense of unknown and discomfort she doesn't know who this is attacking her um, and we don't I mean this guy looks very primitive uh, and yet he has this spectacular technology that is way ahead of our time so it was trying to come up with a way that the music could be tribal and reflect the image of what he is and the unknown and also come up with an element that reflects the, the technology. And what I tried to do is actually approach it completely in contrast. So when we see him, and visually we're seeing something very old and his garb, etc., I tried to be a little more modern with the music. And then when we have the shots of the, the you know, this amazing power generators on the ceiling, I tried to, you know, hearken back to something older and really try to play the contrast of the elements. Adam, what have you done? I'm working on episode eight right now, and we have this flashback back to when they all met and in old England. And I've taken all of these sounds that I've been using for the last two seasons, and I've started pulling back all of the techno, techno elements that I used to manipulate them. So it's the raw sound that no one's ever heard before. But it makes sense that, you know, it, we haven't moved into the future. This is when we began. This is the core time of the five. So now the music is, you know, paralleling that and stripping back to a very simple element and a very simple theme. So many of the episodes, the orchestral element is a small part of it. So um, I've worked with, you know, I have really great sound libraries of orchestral sounds. For Normandy, it's going to be such an epic episode and it will be very orchestrally based. So 
um, we came up with the idea of actually recording an orchestra, making this a really unique approach and, and hiring live musicians, which is rare in this day and age for, for television. But I think it's really necessary to have the real instruments because they're so exposed and such a, an important character in this episode to, to live up to the, the bar that's been set with the show. The show is so filmic, like each episode feels like a, a film and they set the bar so high, it felt like that was a, a resource I really had to draw upon. And also it really helped, helps kind of convey the emotions and um, an orchestra is one of those elements that you don't need to justify for Western art form. Everyone goes to see a movie, they'll, you know, whether it's set in Arabia or Indonesia or wherever, if they hear a Western orchestra playing, they accept it. We kind of, we grow up realizing that's a part of our art form. So there's a comfort level there that the audience can feel when they hear strings and brass and an orchestra sound. So I've tried to incorporate that in for the moments where I don't want to alienate. I don't want them to feel uncomfortable. I want the audience to feel like we're holding their hand and they can relate to the characters. Because the rest of the show was all Andrew Lockington's, we thought, let's give Andrew Lockington a chance to do this. We, you know, we changed the opening theme as an, you know, to honor Andrew, really, and to say, you're our guy, you're doing all the music, change our theme. So when we talked about redoing the opening titles for season three, uh, we basically looked at what the fans had responded to in the score in season two. And everyone really liked the vocal element. So we knew that had to be an element. We also really wanted to um, add, uh, you know, real momentum to the opening titles. A lot of times in the show, we're building to the opening titles, and we wanted to feel like the opening titles were going even bigger. And then lastly, I really wanted something that if someone was grabbing a drink in the fridge and the TV was on in the other room, they would, they would hear that and know within three seconds, oh, that's Sanctuary. You know, something very distinctive that, that um, you know, didn't sound like anything else. So I tried to pull everything in. I tried to pull in the, the orchestral element, the hurdy-gurdy, the electric violin, the imbira, um, they're all a part of it. And one element that I just started playing around with in season three, but I hadn't played around with in season two, was electric guitar. And in talking to Damien and knowing that Damien was a great electric guitar player, we figured out a way for him to play on the score and play on the opening titles. So that awesome electric guitar in the opening titles is our executive producer, creator, director, Damien Kindler. It's one of those dreams that we all have where he approached me and said, I think you should play guitar on the theme. It's very simple. I can show you the parts and you can play with it. And I, I just, I was like, oh, I'd love to, that'd be great. Thinking it would go away because I'd have to go to Toronto to, to, to record it. And I knew I couldn't get there. But then he tricked me. He, he said, um, so you're going to play on the theme. I was like, oh, but Andrew, I, I can't get to Toronto. I'm sorry. I, I guess we'll have to give it a miss. He said, no, I'm coming to Vancouver. I brought my portable recording device that goes into my laptop. Just bring your guitar to work. We'll plug it in. So we recorded it literally in my office in the studio. Uh, I was very nervous. I don't know how people record, like their session musicians record for, for a living. It's very nerve wracking. Um, uh, I, I was very flattered. I, I, it's cool trivia. I, and when we finished recording, I'm like, look, you don't have to use any of this. Just throw it all away. And he said, no, I, I found what I wanted to be. And it went in. So I mean, I, look, Honestly, I'm thrilled. I, are you kidding? Playing on the theme of a TV show? That's like huge. That's, wow. Uh, but I, I, didn't, I didn't say, I shall do it and you shall let me. It was more like he said, no, you, you're a music geek. Do it. Come on, let's do it. And I was like, okay. Literally, and I, I, this is without word of a lie. Every time Amanda hears the theme music, she dances. And every time our show starts and we have the long, you know, 30 second title sequence. Oh, man. Oh, dance. I love it. The most fun part of working on this show is I have this amazing freedom to explore all of these different types of music. There's no boundaries. They've never said, hey, you can't go there. That's too weird. You know, they, they always encourage me to think outside the box and think of a different approach. He's always pushing the envelope, trying new things, giving the show a distinctive deep sound that Sounds like a feature. I can't say enough about him. And the most unassuming, sweet man. And then this 
orchestra comes out of them. The music that we hear, whenever we sit down and do a mix, which is when we actually hear all the music mixed with the sound and all the sound effects and all the people at Sharp Sound do this incredible job, and it's a surprise, it's a gift to us every Tuesday when we go in and sit down. And you sit there and you watch this thing on a giant screen in 5-1 uh, uh, surround sound, and you hear Andrew's music mixed with the sound effects and this kind of stuff. At the end of every one of them, and we've finished, you know, half the season right now. By the time we're doing this, we'll have finished all of them. Um, every time, without exception, we just go, Andrew Lockington is a genius. The music that we have is unlike any other music on any other show. You know, like, it's, it's, there's, there's nothing generic about the music in Sanctuary. It's very um, particular, uh, and, and it, it's, it's definitely... It's the sanctuary sound, I guess you'd call it. Just to have the freedom to explore all these different avenues, um, I think it really frees my hands to do things that uh, I've never done before. And as a composer, I think kind of being, having the training wheels off and having to go out and learn how to ride that two-wheeler for the first time, you come up with creative ways of solving problems that you wouldn't in a normal situation. Yeah.